Okay, so this is an example solving the method of sealed bids. Um, we see in this example we have three players and four items. This is perfect for the method of sealed bids because these four items are indivisible. And when you have indivisible items that need to be shared, the method of sealed bids allows you to bring cash into the final distribution of goods so that everyone can walk away with a fair share even if they don't get an item. So we see in this problem that we have four questions to answer. A, find the value of each player's fair share. B, describe the first settlement on the items with cash. C, determine the amount of surplus after the first settlement. And then D, how do we distribute that surplus for a final settlement of items and cash? <clears throat> so looking at this, uh, the table represents how everyone bid in secret. And the table is after they've come to the uh, uh, table together to disclose their bids, open up the envelopes, and say, this is how I bid on each of these items. Uh, so no one knows how anyone bid until the point of reveal. And then once that point of reveal comes, we say whoever bid the most is going to get those items. So we see right away that Anna's going to get the desk, Belle's going to get the dresser, and Chloe's going to get the vanity and the tapestry. But there's more to it than just saying who gets the items. Um, because based on the way we've circled it, Anna's getting $300 in goods, I'm sorry, Belle's getting $300 in goods, Anna's getting $180, and Chloe's getting $760. We see that that's not a fair outcome, so we have to delve into this a little further. First, let's determine each player's fair share. To do that, you need to add up all of their bids. So the total bids, we see that Anna bid a total of $900 on the goods, Bell bid a total of $900 on the goods, and Chloe bid a total of $1,200 on these goods. There are three players in the game, so the fair share, I'm going to abbreviate fair share as FS. The fair share is the total of your bids divided by the number of players. So Anna has a fair share of $300. Based on the way she bid, she should walk away with $300 in goods um, without laying out any money. Bell also has a fair share of 300 and Chloe has a fair share of 400 Again, this is how much they're willing to pay for the items. And we see that right now, Chloe's responsible for $760 in payments. Because she's willing to put out more money, she has a higher fair share. Anna has an item of, I'm sorry, Bell has an item of 300 that she's going to win. And Anna has an item of $180 that she's going to win. So to answer part C, the results of the first round, we have to now find the inequity. Anna is entitled to $300, but she's only getting $180 in goods. She expects $120 in cash. Belle has a $300 fair share, and she's getting a $300 dresser. She breaks even. She expects nothing. All Belle is going to get right now is that dresser. Chloe has $760 in goods. She's only supposed to get $400. So Chloe's going to have to pay $360. And typically, we set up an escrow account for all of the transactions uh, related to the settlement to be put into and for checks to be paid out from. So Chloe's going to pay $360 into escrow. Anna's going to take $120 out. So we can now describe our first round settlement. Anna gets the desk. And $120 cash. Bell gets the dresser and no cash.
and we see that Chloe, well, she gets the vanity and the tapestry, and she has to pay $360 into escrow. So that answers part B for our question. Part C asks, find the surplus after the first settlement. Well, if I go back to the previous slide, 360 got paid into escrow, 120 came out, that leaves a balance of $240 in escrow. So what do we do with this extra money? And that comes into part D. Well, if we have an extra $240 and there's three players, then it makes sense to take the 240 and divide it by three. In the end, we don't want any money in escrow. Why should the bank get our money? These three players should get all of the money. So the $240 divided by three is $80 each. That is going to now change the settlement. So if we go back a slide, we see Anna gets the desk in 120, but now she's going to get an additional 80. Her final settlement is going to be the desk in 200. Belle had to dress her in no cash, but now Belle is going to get to dress her in $80. And Chloe gets the vanity and the tapestry, and she had to pay out $360 into escrow. But now that she's getting $80 back, it's as though she's paying out less. So instead of paying 360, Chloe's going to pay 280. This will lead to a balance of zero with no surplus. Everyone gets their fair share according to the way they bid. And um, this is a, a technique for trying to share items that are indivisible. And this can be used in a, an estate sale. This can be used uh, in a divorce settlement. We can use this technique to figure out who should get what based on what they're willing to pay for these items. 